So the market rallied eight points today, fourth day in a row to the upside. Uh, we're getting to rather lofty heights. I'm going to show you how lofty those heights are, uh, historically speaking, uh, in today's video. We'll kind of break down uh, our new any any new expectations we may have uh, if things are as we're approaching this 200-day moving average and the potential for a golden cross on the 15 200 day moving averages i'm also going to break down uh, one stock that if we do continue higher is set up today with today's bounce for a pretty decent opportunity um, uh, for a bullish trade so let's go ahead and get started today is wednesday february the 13th 2019 this is the market outlook from marketscholars.com my name is david settle all right, well, let's start off taking a look at the S&P 500, not the Russell, uh, with the market forecast indicator. Another update, four days in a row again, uh, five, four days in a row streak uh, last week, actually five days in a row last week or the week before. So nine days out of 11 that we've been higher with two little down days. Uh, and then you add on a couple of down days there and one down day there and a couple of down days there. And, one, you know, and that's all we've had since January the 3rd. Uh, those are the down days that we've had. So it's been a nice uh, rally, uh, getting up through the Fibonacci retracement zone, moving up now 27.50, very small range you'll see here in a second. Still setting up, I mean, you see we're obviously the higher highs, um, but the near-term line is not getting the higher highs. We were so bullish at that point uh, with, the, with the cluster on the Russell 2000. Remember, we got the cluster right there on the Russell 2000. Didn't quite get it here because the momentum line didn't move up high enough before this little short-term pullback that we've had. Uh, but regardless, you know, we got the potential for, we're already to higher highs and, and it's gonna be hard for, not, for us not to get lower highs on the index uh, itself. And you can see this Fibonacci retracement lines are raised higher uh, with this rally that we've got on. So we're still pushing higher. Uh, something I did bring up, oh, I'll bring up here in just a second. Let's take a look at the other Index. As you can see, they're all the same, right? The strong bullish posture, bearish, near to divergent with the higher highs. Same thing with the NASDAQ. The Russell's the one that's a little different. Um, it didn't get as bullish on the near term line over here, 96. And we did get up to a higher near term high here. So that's a little different, the Russell. And, and we came really darn close yesterday to another overbought cluster. Um, you know, we were 72 on the, let's see right there, 70, uh, 73 on the momentum line. Uh, with a 98 on there. The day before that, we were at 89 on the momentum line and 72 on the near term line. So, very, very close to another oversold cluster uh, on the Russell 2000. Needless to say, uh, market sentiment on all these are all still below 50, so we haven't crossed that threshold yet. In fact, the Dow, you know, is just slowing down a little bit uh, as we slow down. But the pace that we're on to get to this point has been such a strong pace. Uh, off of this low point. We're up 17% uh, off of this Christmas Eve low to where we're at right now, 17.5%. Uh, That's a 127.5 an annualized pace uh, over, the, over the course of 50 days. So almost two months uh, we're headed toward, a couple weeks away from two month run. That's a strong rally uh, with a 29% angle. See so that 45%, you know, you know, if you look at this, this kind of angle here, this 20% angle, you can see as we move it up higher, it gets you know hard to sustain. If you look at like a you know this kind of angle over here, off of this low point, just to get to this high, you know there's a 20% angle. That's kind of your normal nice little run, and we're at 29% on this. So it's a strong run, very typical, coming off an extreme low. Uh, but it, like I said before, hard to sustain a long-term trend from this point um, without, you know, the easier to sustain, well, you can see here, uh, if I were to zoom out to just a couple of, uh, to last year at this time, hard to sustain a long-term trend from this point going up right to here. Uh, that would have only been a, uh, what, a 5% return, uh, but 10% annualized return over that period. You know, that's, that didn't happen, right? It came off of this low point here, um, and you can see that one's a higher percentile. So, you know, that kind of a move, this kind of a low point, easier to sustain a, is easier to sustain a long-term trend coming off of it than it is the, 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 the spike high, the V bottom high um, that's coming off of that surge low point. Over here's the surge low point here. 
here's the surge lower point in December. So not impossible because anything can happen in the markets. But you know, this is all about probabilities. Right? Trading and investing in the market is all about probabilities. What are the probabilities that we'll get a 10% run from this point for through the end of the year? Um, you know, versus say a you know a 20 plus percent run off of whatever low point we might get uh, through the end of the year if we were to get the pullback. You can, the odds are different uh, based on what we've seen in the past. You would expect the latter scenario there to be higher probability event uh, than the former scenario, um, and that's the expectations. So you can see why I continue with the expectations of some kind of intermediate pullback towards this red line which would give us that yellow moving average, which would give us a bounce off with a better combination of dark green shading, dark green line. Whereas here we got dark green shading with a yellow line um, and was that way for a while, for a couple of weeks before the, the moving average finally turned up. That's not the best uh, reversal type scenario. All right, before we look at some other charts, reminders, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Mouse over the logo right here in the bottom right corner of your screen. Hit that red subscribe button that pops out. Also, click the thumbs up icon down below the video. That lets us know two things. Number one, you got something out of our video today. Number two, it lets us know uh, that you want us to do the video again. It lets YouTube know that this is an engaging piece of content. As I mentioned before, uh, the worst thing you can do if you don't like the video is not click on anything. Um, because it's the clicks, it's the thumbs up, it's even the thumbs down, it's the comments um, that, that tells YouTube that they should promote this video to other people. Uh, with that said, comment on what anything that stands out to you uh, from the video today. Join our Daily Market Outlook email list. Uh, there's a link popping out there in the top right corner of your screen. Click on that link uh, to subscribe. You can also do that. Uh, you can subscribe to our email list when you subscribe to our site, which is a very easy way to do that. Uh, you can do it for free. Uh, follow me on Twitter for more content like this uh, in between videos and join our daily market out or join excuse me our market outlook community that we've created on Facebook. You can also subscribe to our email list if you're watching this on the blog come down here to the bottom a really easy way just fill in this form and you can subscribe to our daily market outlook email. That email has um, two watch lists typically every day the overbought and oversold clusters watch lists uh, within the S&P 500 so to get those lists. Uh, make sure you sign up. A really easy way to do that. Name, first name, last name, email address, and so click that sign up button. Also, click this uh, heart on the, today's Market Outlook tweet. Uh, that tells me that you like the video as well. And then click on this image. It takes you to your Facebook post uh, where you can click on the thumbs up there and like today's Market Outlook video with a thumbs up or heart or whatever you, you would like to do. Uh, again, a reminder, our calendar over here on the right of our uh, classes that we teach, you can see what's coming up and click on view more to see uh, the rest of our calendar for the given month. And again, you can subscribe to our site by clicking on this image under Join Market Scholars. Uh, you can do that for free, really easy way to subscribe. All right, back to the charts. Let's take a look at the long-term charts here and look at that rally this week. So it's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight weeks now of just this unabashed move. <laughs> Uh, high wall would be seven. Can I not count? No, it's eight. Eight weeks uh, to the upside. A couple really small uh, ranges in there. So a big move to the upside here from 2350 to 2750. 400 plus points uh, on the S&P above and, and not quite the uh, golden cross yet, uh, but we're getting there. If you take a look at uh, the three green arrows, um, you can see obviously we're back to having three green arrows again. The MACD is back above its moving average. Uh, but not by much, and not it's not up to a new high. Uh, so you know, very susceptible coming off of such extreme highs in the MACD to bearish divergences. So keep your eyes on that. You notice we haven't closed below the eight-day moving average. I've talked about this before. Let me get rid of the uh, stochastics down here, and we'll take a look at uh, where we are the eight-day moving average. See, a normal inhale exhale means that we close above and below that eight day moving average pretty regularly. You can see that up here. You go, you know, nice good bullish intermediate run, kind of normal right there, ups and downs, ups and downs. If I go over the last couple of years, um, you can see, you know, here's a nice good normal up and down, up and down, up and down. And then we went a period where we didn't go down below it hardly at all. We had one little brief touch where we should have had the intermediate pullback right here, but then tax reform really lifted us off and 
And uh, we never did really get below it at all for months. For five months, we were above the eight-day moving average. And then that's resulted, right? You know, you're that When you're up above it for that long, this is the kind of move that results. Otherwise, you can see the ups and downs uh, be between, especially in the normal bullish market. Well, here we are again without uh, any normal ups and downs above that and uh, below the eight-day moving average. We're way up above it. We've been way up above it now for a long time. Um, you can see even here we went up and down, up and down, uh, above and below it uh, back in this last period. Uh, again, you can go back and I've, I've mentioned, I've kind of compared this time frame that we're on right now to 2011 um, back in here. Uh, and you can see back in 2011, right here 2011 you can see again up as we came off of that low and here's the surge low we came off of that low we were above it for a while for you know about an expiration cycle you know a little bit before it and a little bit after but then ups and downs ups and downs ups and downs right so here now we are you know through an expiration cycle almost the two expiration cycles with being above the eight day moving average without any kind of pullback below it so a little concerning in that regard uh, why I bring that up and you can also see here too if you take a look at where we're at trading relative to the 200 day simple moving average um, you can see again very similar to 2011 in 2011 we had dropped uh, this what 200 some odd or 100 and uh, what would that be 100 and oh, let's zoom in on it so let's see it would be right that's 2010 so 2011 right there the lowest point we got in the MACD was 180 points. So that is about 17%. We were about, at that point, about 17% below, uh, 16 to 17% below the 200 day moving average um, at that time. Uh, at that time. So that's what this gap measures. That's 180 points. Uh, 180 points. And then um, that's the price compared to the moving average. And then you compare that number to the, what the index value was. And that's where you get that 17% figure. Well, that's the same amount that we had here, even though this is 400 points, you know, much higher level index, right? So again, we're about 16, 17% below the 200 day moving average. And like in 2011, when we got down here, we made a big surge up off of that low, big surge to the 200 day moving average, even a little bit above it for a couple of days right there. And then we had the ups and downs Then we had the volatility period. Uh, where we didn't, where we stayed below the 200-day moving average and finally crossed it for good at the end of 2011, beginning of 2012. Well, you know, again, we're getting, you know, we've had this surge up to the 200-day moving average. Are we going to be able to get up above it and maintain um, this kind of a rally um, without this, this pause in between? We haven't seen that before. And that's why I'm a little concerned to have that kind of a move and then this kind of a bullish trend afterwards without that period of volatility which is typical when you're retesting you know a major moving average like the 200 day moving average that everybody's watching so don't be surprised if we don't get a little bit of a breakout maybe even up to 2800 similar to what we got here in 2011 where we got that um, breakout right there. I mean, that was a big breakout. It got us up through the 200-day moving average. Probably suckered a lot of people in. And then that was the high point for, for a couple of expiration cycles. Um, we'll see if that ends up being something similar that may get us up towards that 2800, trying to sucker some people in before, you know, some bouts of volatility uh, through a couple of expiration cycles as we trade around here. You can see earlier this year, we never, you know, this is different from last year. This was all above the 200 day moving average versus uh, this move below. That's why that was so crazy move to the downside. And even in 2015 and 16, this was all below it. We got up above it and we couldn't stay up. We couldn't start a trend. Again, we got below it. And this was not nearly at this point. Um, this was the, the 206 points. The index was at 118.29. So more than 10%, but not to the same extreme. And you can see the rally that we had. Uh, to get up towards the 200 day moving average and then the period of volatility that we had afterwards before eventually the trend stuck and stayed and we stayed above the 200 day moving average from that going forward. So that's the kind of uh, impact that we're looking to see. Are we going to get that kind of a move? Because this was far a bigger drop than what we saw even at the beginning of 2016. Um, more, more like 
and what we saw in 2011. You remember a lot of this selling was uh, monetary policy error, right? Where it was basically the Fed in, in its in its uh, attempts to be transparent. Um, you know, some really some the market took uh, the comments and answers to questions at the press conference from the Fed chairman to be very hawkish, which is not what the market had wanted. Uh, and sold it off and you can see since then he's backtracked those comments and you can see you know how temporary that type of a move really was all right so on the intraday charts you can see we did get a new four-week high point uh, the four-week low is right at the very left end of the chart so you can see the four-week low is going to move up tomorrow for a couple of days to this level and then after those couple of days it will move up to this level and stay there for a few more days before moving up uh, to that low point for a few days and then uh, you, you can kind of get an idea. And, and right now, we, we talked about by the end of this week, the Hakanyashi Open uh, will be right around the midpoint of the chart and the last week's low point. So, you know, again, you can see the pullback that we can have and still not really impact posture changing. But that's going to change as this lot bottom line moves higher, the dotted line will move higher too. And then next week, you know, this purple line, which is the Hakanyashi Open, will also move higher. Uh, the low point will probably move higher up above last uh, this week's low. We'll have to see you know where we finish the week because there's still two days worth of data that can impact that the 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 values that would create the the purple line. Um, but um, but you can see how things are starting to move higher and we're not really pushing strongly higher to the upside as much as we are pulling the low end up to the downside. So it's starting to shrink up, which is typical, right? When you are starting to diverge, you've had a big move, you're, start, you're continuing to push higher, but with much smaller highs than what you originally got off of that low, you're gonna start slowing down. The volume really, you can see we got some volume at the end, but the volume was really light uh, at 65 million shares below the average, which is way down from where it was over here. Uh, when the average was 100, the average had gotten up to 168 million, so we're way down now. You'll see in a second, 65 million today. The average trading range with with about a 75 cent gap from yesterday's close to today's low. Uh, well, let's see, about a, a 274.10. Looks like we did get a little bit lower low by the end of the day, 274.56. So really, only about a half a point of a gap. So you know, you're about you're just over one and three quarter points. Uh, with an ATR three and a half, so just about half the ATR today. Very, very small ATR. Uh, here we go. Uh, very small ATR, way down here at the bottom. Uh, it's bringing this line down, not below one percent yet. That's when you know that the bullish trend is intact, right? Is when that falls below one percent. So we're not there yet, but we're getting closer. This is at 3.37, and the volume at 65 million continues to be very low. And the average, you can see how low the average has dropped from its peak. So the averages, the ranges, they've all really fallen off. Uh, so we're going to naturally slow down anyway, especially when you consider the VIX. Um, now the VIX has been unable to really break below this 15 level and the 90 percent level, which again is what you look for for that bullish trend to stay entrenched. And another reason why I'm still expecting a little bit of volatility um, because we haven't broken those key technical levels that tell us the trend is intact. The trend is now here to stay. Of course, I've also shown you this chart, uh, which includes the trend quality and noise balance here at the bottom, the trend noise balance, uh, which is telling you right now we still have, this is still a lot of noise uh, considering where we've been uh, over the last little bit. And you can also see too uh, that the trend quality is still at right pretty much at zero. In fact, it is exactly at zero. Uh, right now it's the current level uh, well excuse me it's at yeah it's at zero uh, you can see over to the left these numbers here uh, we're exactly at zero so which means there's just no trend because again we bounced up so much because we fell so much and we're sitting right uh, there and it's, you can really see it whenever I do the log scale uh, on this you can kind of see especially over the long term yeah, let's do the weekly there we go. If you do the long term again, you can see how you know it's not easy for us to get, and we're getting, we're getting. When we're below 50, you just get a lot of noise, and that's what we're getting. This this last year, we've gotten a lot of noise and a lot of extreme moves within that noise, but we haven't got a nice steady trend uh, since 2017. And you can see that's nice steady trend we had there. You can see some of these other kind of not as long since that 2009 low point. All the other uh, trends that we got. 
Uh, right now, just like we were in 15 and 16, late 15, early 16, a lot of noise. Uh, just like we were in 2011, a lot of noise. Uh, that's the period that we're in right now without the lack of a good trend that we finally started to get there in 2012. A couple little pullbacks, um, but you can see how the trend got established there. A lot of noise here, and then we finally got it established uh, in uh, 2016, right before the election, and then it took off really after, and that's where we we're in that noisy period again. All right, so what do you think? Do you agree or disagree with that outlook? Um, hit that poll popping out in the top right corner of your screen. Click either agree or disagree. If you click disagree, scroll down below, comment on what you're seeing. Uh, do you think that the bullish trend has started? Do you think we're on it? Uh, how, do you think we have a good run? I, I do eventually think we'll have a good 2019 by the end of the year. Uh, do you think we're already well on that way without the need for a pullback, intermediate pullback? Or do you think that we might be uh, failing here potentially at the 200-day moving average with more losses to come by the end of the year. So if there's anything that you're seeing on the charts that would suggest either of those scenarios, please share those uh, down in the comment section below. Again, one of the key drivers that's driving today's price action continues to be crude oil. If I were to move this over here to these asset class watch lists, crude oil continues to be the biggest driver. Now, emerging markets didn't benefit like they normally do. Uh, the dollar... Uh, also had a really strong day today too, finishing high, uh, higher than stocks. Commodities were higher, uh, MLP is benefiting as well. These are kind of all three kind of go together, especially when crude oil is higher. Real estate stays strong. Value stocks outpacing growth stocks. Mid cap stocks outpacing, um, outpacing the S&P 500 and small cap stocks. Uh, but dividend stocks outpacing preferreds. All right, so interesting to see it, that you know some risk on, some risk off. It's not really strongly one way or the other, and long-term bonds are all down today. So uh, when you look at uh, this move that we're getting here, look at the long-term charts, you can see crude oil uh, continues to be the biggest driver. In fact, if, let's look at the daily chart for crude oil. You can see it better off of that Christmas Eve low point. You know, this is why and we're not bouncing up to new highs like we are in stocks. Um, but the, the strength in crude is what's driven the, the move off this low. Is what, driv what drove a lot of the losses was the weakness in crude. Um, but you can also see that the dollar is, is on its own good run itself and, and threatening to uh, move up to new highs too. Uh, even, uh, even after being relatively weak here. Uh, to the point where we drop down towards that 200-day moving average and without bouncing and bouncing off of it. We haven't dropped down through it. You can see the strong move higher we got. So we'll see how long, much longer that uh, continues to be the case um, because that's going to be impacted by rate hike expectations, which uh, tells us uh, where these bonds will go. The bond yields are so oversold, which means long-term bonds themselves are very overbought. And we're just getting... We've got the, the golden cross, we're getting a little bit of the retest, um, but we've already got the golden cross. So if long-term bonds continue higher, uh, more than likely, unless there's a, you know, unless we're in a bear market in stocks, which we're not yet at least, um, that will actually be bearish for the dollar um, with long, with long because that means yields are falling. And it will mean that the Fed is done with the markets, expecting the Fed to be done with their rate height cycle. Um, and the dollar drops, bonds rally, stocks rally, and especially international stocks will rally, uh, emerging markets in particular. A little bit of a long upper shadow, so a little bit of you know some potential weakness here in the short term, um, but you would expect that to, to gain more strength if the dollar continues to have any kind of weakness um, in light of the Fed being done uh, raising their interest rates, which that's the typical pattern when they are done. The only thing due on the calendar, the main thing that was due this today on the calendar was the CPI report, um, the inflation data. Uh, you can see kind of coming in flat on a month over month basis, uh, was expected to rise a tick, was down a small smidgen. Uh, not very much of a change except for in the year over year change, we did drop from 2% year over year down to 1.6%. Uh, you can see the impact that has on the headline basis. Uh, over, here, over here on the headline basis, really dropping. Again, hard for the Fed to be too hawkish uh, with their rate hikes uh, when inflation is really tame at the headline level, but especially kind of stalling out here at the um, core level. 
Uh, that's really the only thing. The indicators are positive in the U.S., but very negative globally. Um, so that's a factor to keep in mind because of this global recession that we're in. And then here's your odds for a rate hike. Uh, they jumped up today in light of that CPI data report with core staying strong, but still 10 less than 10% for even just one rate hike by the end of the year. Um, the market's pretty much saying very little chance, well, that it, very high likelihood that the Fed is done uh, raising rates for the foreseeable future. Of course, the impact of that is lower yields, uh, lower U.S. dollar, um, bullish equities and bullish internationals. Um, bullish, and with that, you'd have, uh, from a sector rotation standpoint, you would expect energy to do well in that environment. Uh, with falling yield, you'd expect real estate to do well in that environment. Industrials and energy and materials kind of go together. Utilities would go with real estate. So you can kind of see an off and on. Some interest rate sensitive areas do well. Some, um, you know, this dollar sensitive areas do well. On the other hand, you can see a cyclicals, technology, consumer uh, communication services down, but discretionary up. Uh, staples, healthcare, utility down, real estate up. So not, you know, all, all not not really a clear risk on or risk off move. Uh, you can see the the real estate, utilities. I mean, look at these intermediate values: uh, technology, healthcare, uh, financials, industrials, um, discretionary, staples. Those are all above ninety. Um, the communication services above eighty. Um, uh, Materials is almost 80, but it's rising. Uh, and then, of course, energy is also above 80. So, I mean, that's a pretty bullish pattern. Of course, the S&P itself has got a 94 value in the intermediate line. Pretty decent bullish pattern with some of them more bullish than others, uh, further above their moving average, and showing oversold clusters, the overbought clusters, these safe haven areas showing overbought clusters. Uh, kind of interesting to see that pattern develop. Usually you'll see that pattern more towards the end of a bullish cycle, not coming up off of a low. Usually you'll see technology and discretionary uh, cyclical type areas showing oversold clusters when you're coming up off of a V bottom. It's kind of interesting to see these safe havens there because normally when you see them with the overbought clusters, uh, they outperform and do really well at the in a maturing uh, bullish market. Uh, we can hardly say that we're in a maturing, maturing bullish market uh, right now. For you basketball enthusiasts, it would be like comparing Dwayne Wade to Donovan Mitchell. Same type of player. One is very mature um, and is actually retiring this year. Uh, the other is very young and doing really well. Uh, so again, uh, the staples you would expect to be the Dwayne Wades of the world. Uh, whereas cyclicals, technology, and discretionary, and communication services now, uh, you'd expect to be the Donovan Mitchells of the world. So sorry for those who don't catch that reference, but it's the idea is that one, you'd expect to do well in maturing at times. The others, you'd expect to do well when we're young and dynamic, when the mature, when the bullish trend is young and dynamic. One stock that looks poised to do pretty, if we are going to maintain bullishness, one stock that looks poised to do well from a bullish uh, standpoint is Target. Nice little bounce higher. It does have earnings coming out. So keep that in mind in terms of risk management. Uh, you have earnings coming out here on the stock. Um, but you can see the bounce it had today. Um, here we go. Strong volume. Not quite three green arrows, but getting pretty close. If you take a look at those lines broken out. Um, here we go. Uh, you can see how we bounce off the 30-day moving average right back up above the 8-day moving average. The MACD is still positive and moving higher. The Stochastics is still in the upper half of its chart uh, and moving higher. If you take a look at some of these other indicators like the DMI we look at a lot, you can see we haven't crossed above 25 yet, but the positive has crossed above the negative. Uh, again, with that strong volume, when you look at the other uh, DMI indicators along with it, here we go. Uh, positive on the histogram finally uh, today with a positive green arrow. That's a positive combination uh, all around the board there. Uh, if you look at the Bollinger Bands for Target, uh, that's a little bit different story. You've got, you know, again, we had this area, this volume node that we're bouncing off of. You can see not much volume up above where we're at, a lot more in this area. So you break up above this highs with this low ba bandwidth, we have an opportunity uh, for a decent move. Finally, let's look at the uh, market forecast indicator and the long-term chart uh, for it. You can see the bounce off the moving average. You can see how the moving average turned green. At the same time, you got the dark green shading. Uh, Short-term sentiment improving. 
And then from a long-term perspective uh, for target, uh, you can see that you know we had come up to the 50, we pull back down to it, and now potentially with a long lower shadow, uh, an opportunity for a bounce. Remember, earnings coming up, so we can say, okay, well, you know, we, there's an opportunity for bullish moves out of this. What if we just bought the long call? Um, and we, we can manage our risk really well because you can't lose more than what you paid for it. Um, we can even try to set a stop order. So we'll do this. We'll do a right click buy custom with OCO bracket. Uh, we will set our stop order and both of these at GTC. Uh, set our stop order at $1.65. So half of that. Uh, but we can position size around the 330 if we want to be more conservative and try to take a smaller loss. Uh, we can position size smaller than normal because of the earnings. So keep that in mind. Knowing that you know if we do break up through that gap, uh, there's good reward potential uh, we can set our uh, limit or we can just go without the limit and just a stop order um, but that would set us up for a two to one uh, reward to risk ratio so in a really easy way to manage like i said if you position size around the 330 then no matter what it does to the downside no matter what negative response it has to earnings you can't lose more than 330 bucks so you can define your risk that way and leave open the opportunity for bullish moves at least in the next uh, 64 days which you can see can get us all the way up past $82 at current volatility levels I mean that's way up here it would not be that part of a move for it to make you know a $10 move to get to that point all right now I want to hear from you uh, what do you think about tonight's market outlook do you have any questions or comments about anything I discussed or any charts we looked at do you have any questions or comments on anything I didn't discuss that you want me to look at uh, remember to uh, participate in our Market Outlook forum with that link that's right above the video if you're watching on our blog. And you can, you can participate in those forums for free. Uh, all you have to do is subscribe, and I showed you how to do that earlier. And remember to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, click that thumbs up icon, and comment on the video. Also remember to like uh, tonight's Market Outlook tweet and uh, today's tonight's Market Outlook Facebook post. Uh, follow me on Twitter for more content in between videos and join our Market Outlook community that we created on Facebook. Have a great rest of your evening, everybody, and we'll see you all next time.